I traded in my hot rod, but the hot rods of a freight, clattering swiftly out of the dank, dark, fetid city with its dank, dark, fetid memories of defeat. Now I suffer on sunshine, flowers, succulent trees. I'll try it, this corny picture postcard diet. I'll shed the concrete poison of the skyscraper like a snake sheds its skin. Bill Bailey isn't coming home. Don't give my regards to old Broadway. Hail, hail. The gang's not here. I'm alone. 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 Captain Holbrook. Hello, Sergeant. Wait till I get you back at the apartment, wise guy. <laughs> what did I do? The captain heard a rumor that one of his new detectives was consorting with notorious opium eaters. I just wanted to ace his mind. Come on, Sergeant, sit down, pull up a chair. <clears throat> and order me an... Uh, existentialist special. And pass the bottle when he got dry And brushed away the blue tail fly Jim Crackhorn, I don't care Jim Crackhorn, and I don't care Jim Crackhorn, I don't care My master's gone away Steve, you're a poet. What rhymes with mud? Blood, and it's gonna be your... Ah, 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 now good intellectuals don't fight. Well, I think I've had my cup of culture for this evening. And my cup runneth over. I swear this stuff's got a life of its own. Now, it's good for him, Steve. And I really did enjoy the coffee. Good night. Good night, Steve. Yeah, I'll see you back at the apartment, old buddy, buddy, buddy boy. Yeah, but if you get there before I do, you better hide anything that can be used as a deadly weapon. Oh, funny, very funny. Two gentlemen sitting with you. Oh, that was my ex-friend, Sergeant Ballard and uh, Captain Holbrook. They uh, just dropped in for a few laughs. They enjoy your poem? Well, let's say they heard my poem. I think it's the best thing you've ever done. You should have it published. Oh, it'll have a pretty wide circulation, all right. Tomorrow morning in police headquarters. Steve, don't be discouraged. They're squares. What do they know? Oh, uh, Steve, would you excuse me? There's someone up in the bookshop. Beneath this stone, I'm forced to lie. A victim of the blue tail fly. Jim Crackhorn, I don't care. Jim Crackhorn, I don't care. Jim Crackhorn, and I don't care. My master's gone away. You, you fourth-rate imitation of Jackson Pollock. Me? Yeah. Imitate? <laughs> Listen, Lazarus, Kaczynski imitates no one. You, you photographer. Oh, sure, sure. To anybody who can draw a straight line to you as a photographer. Yes, 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 yes. because any fool can draw a straight line with a ruler. Well, any fool can, can drip slop from a paintbrush and call it a work of art. Well, I'll show you, look. Yeah, see that? Yeah, I see that. Oh, that's a genius. Come on, come on, come on. Show me, show me, genius. Yes, okay. genius. Come on, show me. Fine, fine, fine. I'll wait. Show me. 
misunderstanding. There was no reason to bring them down. And that woman kept screaming. The woman was a tourist officer. She panicked. If the police hadn't come into my place, the fight would have been over in 30 seconds. Or maybe they'd have killed each other, huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't want to press the charges? Press charges? Without these two big spenders, I'd be out of business. All right, you're dismissed. Go on back where you came from. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Lazarus, take your temperament, put it on canvas. Maybe you'll sell a painting. You can go back, too. No, I think I've had it for the night. That uh, little shrimp pack's uh, left hook like a heavyweight. Well, I'm glad to see you haven't lost your sense of humor. No, I haven't. Where'd you misplace yours, Johnny? I turned it in for a sense of dignity when I took this job. And since what have I been playing the clown? All I did was try to break up a fight among friends. What, friends? You shouldn't have been in that coffee house in the first place. No, I feel electric. Not electric kid advice. Advice away. Forget it, forget it. No, I want to know what's wrong with my visiting a coffee house. All I've been getting since I came in here were dirty looks. Now, I'd like to hear one intelligent argument. Look, I may be a little old-fashioned, but if you were my kid brother, I'd belt you. An argument, Johnny, an argument. All right, Mr. IQ. You're a cop. Not only are you a cop, you're in Captain Holbrook's squad. And you're on probation, and don't forget it. And it's not going to do your career or reputation any good to be seen in those crummy little coffee houses with those phonies. Hey, don't talk to me about my reputation. I may be younger than you, but I value my reputation as much as you do yours. B, you've got no right to call them phonies. All right, not phonies and beatniks. What well, define beatniks? A vagrant with intellectual pretensions. They're not vagrants. Now, there's nothing wrong with people sitting at a little restaurant, drinking coffee, discussing books, listening to a few no. folk songs. Smoking heaven knows what, slitting each other's throats. Take a look at last night's police blotter. Yeah, but you're not going to condemn all coffee houses because we've had trouble in some of them. Johnny, that's like saying to people, uh, you can't have kids because there's a juvenile delinquent in the neighborhood. Oh, uh, quit putting words in my mouth. I saw them, they're phonies. They're not phonies. And those two uh, painters that were in here a while ago, I suppose you be teaching at Harvard. Just because they don't conform to society as you see it? And even if they are phonies, at least they were talking about art and not stolen hubcaps. You know, Johnny, I'm surprised at you. This is a big, powerful country. I don't know why we should be afraid of a few phonies, a few eggheads, maybe a few beatniks. All right, it's enough. You're a cop. And I'm also a human being, and they're my friends, and I'm not ashamed of them. Good night. <laughs> I'm not hungry. All I want is a little fresh air. Me too. Hi. Oh, Benji, I want you to meet my daughter. Oh, oh we met, Tobe. We met while you were at the police station. We had a nice talk. Sweetheart, there's someone up in the bookshop. Oh, um, I'll, I'll see you, Mr. Summer. I expect you will, my dear. Tell my daughter. Tobe, if you're going to get mad, hit me. Don't tell my Sue's the only one I got. What did you tell her? I told her we were old friends. Is that a lie? What do you want, Benji? It's getting hot in here. Where'd you say you were hiding that fresh air? Over here. Hey, what's it all about, Benji? <laughs> you put a little weight on since I seen you last. I guess you need it on account of your voice, I mean. You know, them opera stars, the fatter they are, the sweeter they sing. Look at me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> if my mother were alive, rest her soul, she'd have a connection. I run around too much. I'm a dopey. I need someone to tell me what to do and ball me up when I don't do it. How much do you want, Benji? I don't accept charity, Tope. Then call it a loan. A hundred bucks? I don't need welch on you. I got enough on my conscience already. I can't sing for my supper, but I can work for it. I've got no job for you. 
you'll think of something. I've got no job for you, Benji. I can give you a couple of hundred. I can't take it from you, Toby. It's not the money so much. I need a quiet place to stay. I've got no place to put you up. You got an extra bedroom up in your apartment. I was told me. Who are you hiding from, Benji? Keep a fish down there. Mm -hmm. Who are you hiding from? You know, Tob, I worked for many guys. But not one guy before he hired me asked me who you're hiding from. So don't you. You could pass for a university student. Remarkable. Shall we get on with it, Mr. Worthing? Yes, of course. First, put the picture in your pocket and study the face some more. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll remember the face, Mr. Whiting. Name is Benji Summers. Maybe he's using a different name now, but that doesn't make any difference. As long as you remember the face. Where do we find this guy? I don't know exactly. One of my boys thought he saw him down in the south part of town. It's an artist's column. We'll find him. You two come very highly recommended. I'm certain you'll do a fine job. There's your retainer. The rest will be paid on delivery. How do you intend to do it, Mr. Sutter? A knife? A gun? No, uh, I'd rather not know. For your five grand, you might as well be surprised, huh? Rat Pack has a new convert in Police Sergeant Steve Nelson. We can all sleep safely in our beds, secure in the knowledge that our cultural life is in capable hands. Captain, that's a rotten, snide thing to write. Yeah, that's what the commissioner said when he called me this morning. The commissioner, Captain, it wasn't my fault. I didn't say it was. If you'd have stayed at Toby's place another 20 minutes, you'd have been right in the middle of the fight, too. I said I'm not blaming you. Then why am I being called on the carpet? I'm not calling you on the carpet. I called you in here to discuss the Look, matter. Captain, with all due respect with to you... With all due respect to me, you can stop interrupting. I'm captain of this detective squad, and I have a responsibility to the men I work for, as well as the men who work for me. Steve, you can... Paint pictures, write poetry, drink espresso till it comes out of your ears and with anyone you like. As long as it doesn't interfere with your duty as an officer. Sir, I agree, and it doesn't. Well, that's a matter of opinion. Well, I can see Johnny's been talking to you. I'm perfectly capable of coming to my own conclusions. If a member of this squad comes under ridicule, it does interfere with his efficiency as an officer. But it's a free press. What can I do about it? Steve, look. There's no federal statute that prohibits the President of the United States from going into a burlesque house and applauding his favorite stripper. But the dignity of his position won't permit him to do it, even if he wanted to. Well, thanks for putting me in the same class as the President. In other words, what you're saying is stay out of coffee houses before I disgrace the department. Well, I can't make that an order. Your private life is your own. Flamenco, honey. F-L-A. Louise wants me to explain flamenco to her. Wait a minute, honey. I'll put the professor on. Flamenco. This is a book, and I'm reading. Yeah. Uh, Louise, Steve says it's much too complicated to explain over the phone. But look, if you can find another girl, maybe the four of us could... Joanne? Hey, Hamlet, we can get this girl. I'm not interested. She's... 
Are you kidding, man? You know what Jay Mansfield looks like. This girl is twice. I said I'm not interested. Oh, buddy, boy. Uh, Louise, Steve has got a date with Jean-Paul Sartre tonight. Yeah. Well, look, I'll, I'll pick you up around 8.30. Okay, fine. Goodbye. Hey, what's the idea? Oh, listen, buddy, if you're going to brew, you can do it. Soto Voce. Hey, how about that? Now, that's one of the big words you taught me. Chris, why are you bothering me? Look, Steve, maybe Joanne's too much woman for you, so why don't you go down to Toby's place and talk blank verse with Iris? Look, Chris, we share the same apartment, but you're not my social secretary. Now, if I wanted to go to Toby's place, I don't need you to remind me. All right, Steve. Uh, why can't I be honest with myself? I don't go to Toby's place because I'm afraid of my precious job. You know, it's a great feeling, Chris, to feel dishonest with yourself. To feel you've lost your integrity. Hey, yeah, well, what do you say then? Want me to help you look for it? Oh, I know where to find it. At Toby's place. I won't say anything. Look, Chris, I'm a little old for life among the Boy Scouts. And I'm just a hair too young to join the veterans of the Spanish-American Wars. Now, these people are my friends. And they're okay. Have fun. You bet I will. <laughs> The big mountains with her lover, Ike, with two yoke of cattle, a large yellow dog, a tall Shanghai rooster, and one spotted dog, saying goodbye, Pike County, farewell for a while. We'll come back again when we've panned out our pile. Iris. One evening, quite early, they camped on the flat. Was nearby the road on a green shady flat, where Betsy sore-footed laid down to repose. With wonder, I gazed on that white Iris. Nothing. That's the beautiful smile you're wearing. <laughs> Steve, something's wrong here. I can't explain it exactly, but everything's changed since Benzie came here. And I have this feeling, I can't explain it. Look, Iris, uh, your father's a businessman, and if uh, Lou didn't work out in the kitchen, there's no reason for him not firing him and uh, giving an old friend a job. No, it was too sudden. And I have this feeling that Papa did it against his better judgment. Yeah, but uh, Toby's loaned out the extra bedroom to friends before? Steve, please, don't ask me to explain an emotion, a sense of trouble. Okay, Iris, now why don't you tell me everything you know about Mr. Summer? Papa says he's no friend. That's all Papa says. Well, now, maybe I could find out some more about him. How? I haven't decided on my M.O. yet. What? That's, uh, modus operandi. Goodbye, Pike County. Farewell for a while. We'll come back again. Hello, Benji. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. I would like to ask you a little favor. Do one of you think you can do me a sketch of uh, Benji? I'd be delighted. I shall portray him drowning in a sea of stale gravy. No, what I wanted was something more literal, you know, like uh, academic. Academic. Well, don't look at me. This is the photographer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you want it for? I'd like to ask one more favor. Don't ask me why I want it. Well? It'd be a pleasure. Now, how do we get him to pose without his uh, realizing it? Yeah, I'm not to have him pose. I don't even have to see him. That rodent-like face is etched in my memory. Yeah, listen, Lazarus, I don't want an impression. I want something uh, old-fashioned, you know, like you used to do in art school. Mm -hmm. You want profile or you want full face? Well, both, if possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Photographer. <laughs>
Hi, Steve. Charlie. What are you doing? Uh, just going over some mug shots. Can I help you? Thanks. Is it something you're working on currently? Oh, just some homework. You still saw me, kid? No. Good, maybe we can have dinner one night this week, huh? I would love it. Thanks, Johnny. Check with you later, huh? Galoshes, a felt hat, and a magnificent three-pound chunk of driftwood. <laughs> hey, Toby, I'd like to talk to you. All right. You'll have to talk quietly so you don't scare away the sweatshirt I'm after. He's a very wily fella. Why'd you give Benji Summers a job? Iris asked me to find out. She's uh, worried about you. It's in the nature of women to worry. I know at least a hundred songs about worrying women. Sometimes they have their reasons, Toby. I checked our mud file on it. Benji Summer, alias Ben Stone, wanted for armed robbery by Chicago police, 1945, apprehended June 13, 1946. Sentenced to Joliet prison for three years, 1946 to 1949. Is there any other pertinent data you want? Anything else you care to tell me? There's one thing. I like you much better as a poet. I haven't told Iris what I found out. It wouldn't matter to me if you had. showed up here, I gave him a job. Why didn't you tell Iris about this? That Benji's an ex-con? No, sir. Even a man like Benji has a right to some dignity. There's no law that says a man's life is an open book for everyone to read. I told her that Benji was an old friend and that's all she needs to know. And that's all she's going to know. Unless you have to show how smart and what a great detective you are. kitchen mirror. I turned around and he was gone. He's wandering around somewhere. He's in there. Oh. Oh. One of Fred Whiting's men. A year ago I worked for Fred. There was a killing. A guy Fred wanted out of the way. He hired a gunman to do it. The police picked me up for questioning. I told him who did it and that's it. And Whiting's been after me ever since. Now, how do you know that's one of Whiting's men? Oh, how does a fox know when he's being chased by a hunting dog? I know, I know. You recognize him? I think so. He 
across New York, L.A. I saw him someplace. What's he look like? He looks like, uh, he looks like any other creep inside. Please believe me. For a week now, I know I've been watched. Benji, you could be mistaken. No, I'm not hanging around to find out. Lazarus, Lazarus, you're choking me with your infantile theories! Don't please help me. Don't waste time. There's the street. Start running. How far can I run with five bucks in my pocket? All right, Benji. Go on upstairs. Start packing. I'll bring you up some money. I said go. I'm not going in there. I'm going up the ladder. <laughs> Are you uh, ready to answer a few questions, Mr. Miller? I came in here. I found my daughter, Flora, a dead faint. He was right there where you see him. I felt his pulse. There wasn't any. I called the police. That's all. Miss Miller, did you see anyone when you came into the room? Did you see anyone on the fire escape? No, I didn't see anyone. Mr. Miller, do you have any idea who might have killed him? No, no. Well, maybe we can get a few yes answers down in the coffee house. Oh, please, Captain. I know you've got a job to do, but I run a decent little restaurant downstairs, and it's all I've got. Please, don't make a fuss if you can help it. Where were you when this happened? Downstairs. Playing chess? Playing chess. As long as I don't bring discredit to the department, I feel that whatever I do when I'm off duty is my own business. Well, you're on duty now. Downstairs. Max. When did you see Benji last? Oh, half, three quarters of an hour ago. I don't watch the clock much. Where? On the porch. Did you say anything? Give some talk. We were running low on hamburger. You want to know if I should cut Never mind that. Where do you go after you finish talking? Use the fire escape. He went up the apartment. Why didn't he use the regular entrance? Well, it is a regular entrance when you're outside. Why'd he go up the apartment? Wasn't he working? He wanted a short snort. We don't serve hard liquor on the premises. Yeah, found us outside, Matt. Take a look. Looks like uh, Kuczynski's work. Captain, I don't have photographic memory. My friend Lazarus and I, we were discussing Brock, and there I'm are... sure it's a fascinating theory, Mr. Kuczynski, but I'd like to know what you were doing out and back. Excuse me, Captain, but uh, if you'll tell me what's all about... Just tell me what was going on out there. Captain, I'm not an eavesdropper, but uh, I... Lazarus, I'm hungry. Go, go and get me a sandwich, you know. Cream cheese and bagel. And uh, listen, tell that Benji that I... Give Benji's not out in the kitchen. Oh. He's up in Toby's apartment and he's dead. He was stabbed to death. I don't know what to say. Just tell me what you heard out there. Oh, Captain, what... Lazarus and I were fighting all the time, but that doesn't mean that... Were Benji and Toby fighting? 
Captain, a heated discussion is not a fight. How would you like to be booked for murder? They were arguing. I, I mean, they were discussing money, Captain. Honestly. I, I couldn't hear every word, but Denji wanted money and a lot of it. And then Toby said, quite right, you know, he said that he was not a bank, you know. And then, and then Toby changed his mind. He has such a wonderful, generous nature, you know. And he said, go upstairs and pack, and I'll let you have it when I come up, you know. Captain, Captain, no, 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 it isn't what you think. He meant money. Believe me, he meant money, only money. Thank you, Mr. Kuczynski. Oh. I'll have to book Toby on suspicion of murder. Uh, Captain, uh, can I do it? Let me do it, Matt. I want to. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter how many times you ask me. Benji showed up a couple of weeks ago. I gave him a job. What do you mean? You gave him a job? He took it! And he's take you for everything you had if you didn't kill him. Oh, no, I didn't kill him. Uh, Papa Toby. Patron saint of the avant-garde. Spiritual advisor to the college egghead. You're a fraud, Toby. Why didn't you tell me, Toby? Remember what I said once, kid? There's no law that says a man's life is an open book. Especially when he's got a daughter who can read, who thinks he's the greatest thing that ever happened since Albert Camus. You were Benji Summer's cellmate in Joliet? Yeah. They were rough times, Captain. I was a rough kid. Iris was just three years old. How do you tell a little girl three years old that her daddy's a thief? Her mama dreamed up some fairy story that I was across the ocean playing for kings and queens. Johnny, just set it to music, Toby. Call it their blackmail blues. Take it easy, Johnny. And Benji was blackmailing you. And you killed him. Right. And wrong. Benji admitted tonight that he was in deep, deep trouble with some fellow he worked for in New York. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Mr. Fred Weber, Wayne White. Whiting? Quit putting words in his mouth. Whiting, yes, that's the name. Thanks, kid. Have you heard of him, Captain? Yeah, he's one of our newest and least distinguished citizens. Benji said there was gangland killing or something about a year ago. Police picked him up for questioning. He pointed a finger at one of Whiting's men and started running. They caught him up with him tonight. Are you suggesting that Whiting ordered Benji's murder? They take this eye for an eye bit pretty serious. Well, you sure picked yourself a convenient patsy, Toby. Whiting's wanted and blamed for everything, including the San Francisco earthquake. Benji told me that Whiting was after him. He, he begged me for money. You're Get away! In. If it's a lie, it's Benji's lie. You believe me, don't you? I'd like to, Toby. Captain, could I leave between you and the lieutenant? Johnny, take over here, will you? Steve, want to talk to you. All right. Now, did Benji say what the man looked like? You behaved in there as though a knife was stuck in your back. Wasn't it? No, you're still alive. Just your ego that was bruised. I must say you've got a low tolerance of loyalty, especially where your reputation is involved. Captain, don't rub it in. Look, I'm sorry if I'm not psychiatrically oriented enough for you, Captain. You can take me off the case if you'd like. Thanks for the permission. But I'm going to give you the case. <laughs> you're kidding. Well, you're a detective, you're well trained, that's what your record shows. Handle it, it's yours. I don't understand. You may not understand yourself, but you understand that coffee house bunch a lot better than any of us. Captain, I'm a part of this whole mess. Well, dig your way out of it, then. I've got to be objective, Captain. I expect you to be as objective as a human being can be. No more, no less. Yeah, but I... 
I'm not sure I believe Toby's story. Break him down. I told you, it's your case. Even if he's innocent, the publicity would destroy his business. Yeah, that's something to think about. I could have Fred Whiting picked up for questioning. All right. I'm Fred Whiting. Question me. I could ask him where he was tonight. Mm -hmm. All right, I was at a theater, a restaurant, giving a dinner party. Wherever I was, you can bet there are a dozen people to give me an alibi. Steve, Fred Whiting doesn't own anything deadlier than a butter knife. He doesn't have to, as long as he can pay a professional to do the job. We had a dis... Oh, it's an open and shut blind alley. Yeah, I remember I felt the same way about the Chandler kidnapping. The Chandler... Captain, that gives me an idea. Why can't I do the same thing that you did in the Chandler case? You mean plant a false story in the newspapers? Yeah. You know, the two cases have a lot in common. I'd be right, but we can't do it without the newspaper's knowledge. Well, they'd have to agree, of course, but uh, you could take care of that, Captain. You've got influence. Do anything I can. Okay. Now, I'll have to get either Kochinski or Lazarus. It's a wild idea, Captain. Well, at least it's an idea. And you thought of it. Listen, I'm not afraid of you. Give me a Bible and I'll swear that Toby is innocent. Lazarus, how good are you at lying? The best. The best. I'd lie in my teeth if it'll help Toby. Wojcicki, you believe Toby's innocent? Of course I do. He's been very good to you, hasn't he? Like an uncle. But listen, that has nothing to do with it. He is innocent because he is innocent. How would you like to help prove it? I would die for him. Well, now that's exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> Mission accomplished, Mr. Whiting. Pay us the balance and we'll be on our way. Have you seen the evening paper? No, why? Something wrong? Be my guest. I, I can't believe it. Last night, Toby's place, a coffee house in the First Street section of town, was the scene of a murder. Laszlo Kaczynski, 35, was found stabbed to death in the apartment of Toby Miller, proprietor. His close friend, painter Wilbur Lazarus, has given the police their only suspect so far, a blonde artist model named Janet Tremblay. According to Mr. Lazarus, What's Mr. Tremblay What's this supposed to be, a dress different. rehearsal or something? It's got to be a mistake. I never planned anything so carefully. It's, it's got to be a mistake. Yeah, it's a mistake, all right, yours. I told you when we found this guy that I ought to go along on that job. I don't know what to say. I do. You've just lost $5,000. Not yet, I haven't. I've got a contract with you, and I'm going to make good on it. You mean we've got a contract with him? I'm going along this time myself, just to make sure. I didn't know you were busy. Come in, Johnny. Look, Matt. Matt, are we friends? I'll play straight for you, Johnny. Yeah, we're the greatest of friends. I mean, between you and me and these four walls, it's not Captain or Lieutenant, right? Right. All right. Now, let me tell you something, Captain. I think this is nuts. I think it's Halloween. It's like... Playing tricks or treats. Well, it's not completely orthodox police procedure, I'll admit that. Yeah, and playing that story in the newspaper. It makes the publisher practically a partner with the police department. Why, well, I'd let the shoeshine boy be my partner if it'd help the case any. Yeah, but the shoeshine boy doesn't own the newspaper, Matt. And the shoeshine boy can make us look ridiculous. You don't look ridiculous yet, Johnny. Besides, I think it'll work. It's worked before. It'll work. I shot a hole in one once. What are the odds I'll ever do it again? Was this Sergeant Screwball's idea? Sergeant Nelson and I worked this out together. 
Come on, Matt, don't try to cover up for him. You gave him his head and he ran wild, right? I'm surprised our poet laureate didn't write the story in blank verse. Johnny, it was on your recommendation that Sergeant Screwball joined this squad. Wait a minute, it wasn't my recommendation. I never re... That was my recommendation. Right, I'm glad I took it. He's a good man. Look, I know this is a calculated risk, but it's worth taking, even if it fails. We've failed before, you know. All right, Matt. We may come out on top, but I wouldn't bet on it. Now, first a few announcements. My chief cook and bottle washer, Benji Summers, is still upstairs sweating out the grip. So if you like the food prepared by our temporary chef, keep praying for Benji's slow recovery. <laughs> well, now, that's a lot better. That's the first laugh we've had around here in three days. And I think it's about time we called off our wake for our dear departed friend, Laszlo Kuczynski. Kuczynski, this is for you. The sons of the prophet are brave men and bold and quite unaccustomed to fear. But the bravest by far in the ranks of the Shah was Abdullah Bulbul. Abdul Abdullah Bulbul Checkmate. What? Checkmate. Ah, play me a hand of peanuts someday and see how you do. Pinochle is for the middle class mentality. This is an intellectual coffee house. Rub, rub. Thank you, Miss. May I borrow the ketchup, sir? Sure. Thank you. Terrible about Kaczynski, wasn't it? Mm. Tell me, was he a good a painter? as the papers said. Oh, I don't know. I don't know very much about art. <laughs> I thought you were an artist. No, but I uh, write a little bit. Oh, that's very interesting. I, uh, I write, too, articles, mostly. Well, that's interesting. I was thinking uh, Toby's place would make a good story for one of the national magazines. That's fine, fine. I'd like to interview all the people that knew Kaczynski, you, Toby, Lazarus, Benji. Oh, Benji's sick upstairs. Well, I just got over the grip. I'm not going to go into a sick room. I think I'll skip him. Tell me, uh, when did you first meet Kaczynski? Uh, some other time. Excuse me? Oh, sure. Sorry. Meet me out back, huh? Take your last look at the sunshine and brook and send your regrets to the czar. For by this I imply you are going to die. Count Ivan Skavinsky Skavar. Choice, Toby, a killer anyway. 
Please, mister, you've got to let her go. Steve, a bladder. At least give him a chance to surrender. Please, mister, give yourself up. Please, please. Keep talking, Tony, keep talking. Please, mister, don't hurt her. Let her go. We'll give you a chance to get away. All right. Prove it. Clear these people out of here. You've got to trust me. Send her down alone. I give you my word. I'll clear them out. Make your move, fat man. It's your daughter. Well? Come on. Move them. because of the notoriety. But you're still the same faker to me as you always was. Well, I said, if you could turn your envy into cash, you'll be a rich man. Come on, Mike. Come, oh, no, oh, yeah, come, come on, Johnny, be a good sport. Well, they don't go for my kind of music in here, the classics. Oh, well, sure can't. they do, John. We intellectuals like to have a good cry once in a while. Thanks a lot. Oh, come on, give man, it a try. I know the words to a lot of songs, but I don't know all of them. Well, fake it. Give them some of those love songs you used to snow Ella with. You're guessing. <laughs> come on, get up there. Come on. Come on, come on. Get going. Remember, I'm on. Quando era giovane aspettavo sul maestro e davolo il piatto e davolo la bottiglia quando era secco e fa fuggire the blue tail fly Vincenzo Rodrondino non mi importa, Vincenzo Rodrondino non mi importa, Vincenzo Rodrondino non mi importa. E fa fuggire the blue tail fly, e fa fuggire the blue tail fly. 